Hey everybody, how you doing? My name is Paul Warren. I represent Stallman's Monster Squad and many other brands. Peace. It's better that a mistake teaches you humbleness than all your success teaching you arrogance. It's, uh, I read that this morning actually, and for me is to live a healthy life, humble life stuff, is to be kind of honest with yourself. Start being honest with yourself. Start learning from the mistakes that you've done in the past. Accepting those mistakes. Um, and, and basically slapping yourself in the face a little bit and telling yourself, look, that's not right. Oh, this is not right. And being okay with that and learning and building and, and making sure you correct what you've done you know, in the past and make sure in the present you help yourself, um, you guide yourself into the direction and change that you want to see, uh, that you be and also what you want to see in the world. Kind of like how Gandhi said, it's like a cliche, it says, be the change in the world, but in reality, it starts with you and I think a successful life will, can only start with you in your life. It's your choices, it's yours, your discipline, it's your motivation, it's whatever you need to do to get to that goal um, in an honest way, a humble way, as long as you're not hurting anybody. I think that is, um, as you grow and you do that, a lot of things in your life will begin to unfold and stuff that was holding you down and fear holding down will begin to shed. And um, uh, I don't wanna use the word evilness but bad things begin to uh, you begin to bounce them off and uh, you begin to realize that that uh, your success is all depending on you basically that's that simple it's hard to face fears it's hard to face judgment um, but also it's hard to look at yourself in the mirror every morning if you are not living an honest life and a right life, basically. So don't be afraid to look at yourself in the mirror and make that change, man. 100%, all right? Word. For me, that's a successful life. So do what you think is right to make that happen. Hmm. It goes in seasons. It goes in seasons. It's, um, it takes a lot of discipline, a lot of hard work. Sometimes you're inspired, sometimes you're not. Can I cuss or no? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, you just say, ah, fuck it, it's so much work, you know? But when you reach the ending goal for that moment, then you feel like a breath of fresh air, you know? But then another challenge will come. Life is about that. Those are the learning things. So to answer your question, make it simple. No, I don't think I'm there yet. Oh, okay. I'm enjoying the journey and struggling through it and climbing. So. Yeah. No, I just go with the flow. Following the crowd. I've done, as you know, I told you earlier that I've done some time in the past. Thinking that you were doing something right because of the rules of the crowd, I ended up paying the price for that. Okay, so some of my choices, they still were my choices. So I think uh, some of those choices I regretted. You know, and I hurt some of the people that love me the most. So, yeah. Okay, I think it's that. It was not a good situation, but it humbled me. And it was a situation, again, that I told you. Yeah. Making my mother cry because of a choice that I made changed my life forever. Yeah. I've had many in my 49 years of life, you know, four, more than four and a half decades of life. I've had bad situations, good situations. I would say um, going to New York City, Mecca, um, at an older age to search for hip hop and Wiggles embracing me and taking me and showing me around. Then leaving Rocksteady Park at the anniversary 
I'm walking down the subway, and this guy's walking up, and I recognized him. His name is Nick One. Walking up, and he created Videograph, and I only had seen it in VHS. And I look at him, I say, oh shit, you're Nick One. And he goes, oh yeah. And I say, oh, big respect, I watch, I watch your stuff. Next thing you know, he's, we, he said, hey, I'm going over here, you wanna go? And went with him, then showed me, took me to the village, took me all over New York, Soho, took me everywhere. Next day, met up again, and I had to leave. I was taking my flight, and he gave me a bag. And he welcomed me to the Crew 8K, Aerosol Kings, and he had a, a bag full of historical photos from the 70s and 80s. Didn't even know the dude, and to me, the moral of that story is, hip hop in general is that door of opening of humbleness. You can have bad experiences as well being on the street and living hip hop, but I'm getting interviewed in Germany because of hip hop. You understand what I mean? So I look at the camera for that because that is a very humbling thing. A kid coming from a broken family Raised by my mother, working two, three jobs to put shoes on my feet, make sure I'm okay while I'm cutting class and going to practice with my friends, uh, hanging out, hitchhiking to other towns to battle against other kids, wondering where his kid is, where, where her kid is, you know, and coming home exactly when I'm supposed to come home or maybe a bit later. And all those little decisions that I made because of hip hop, got me to where I'm at today. And my mother's support, accepting a boy is gonna be a boy. You understand? And knowing that I was doing that, she wasn't as worried. She was worried that I was in the street doing it, but she knew that I would spend more time practicing with my mates. Maybe we jumped the fence to the school after the school was closed and we used the, the hallways to practice and all that stuff. She knew we were jumping the fence and that's breaking the law, but she knew we weren't doing anything wrong in the school. So if the security came and kicked us out, she knew it wasn't for breaking entry or causing damage. She knew we were just practicing because we wanted to use that smooth floor. And the humblest, humblest thing is hip hop in general and what it's taught me, the discipline, what it's taught me from the good to the bad. You know, I'm here because of that. I'm on this camera because of that. One word, peace, let it go. Yeah. My mother, my dad, and everybody that has practiced and is a practitioner of hip hop from past to present. Everybody, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, from old to who's doing it now and to those to come. Those that carry on that tradition will, that hip hop spirit will give you what it gave all of us. And if I wasn't a practitioner of this, I don't think I would even be sitting in this chair right now, to be honest. Uh, so I want to thank everybody that is a practitioner of this culture. You know who you are, you know who lives it. So I don't need to mention names, all thanks is to you. So if you're watching this and you're seeing it and you're a practitioner, thank you too. You know, I don't want to leave nobody out. You know, I don't want to do a mistake from the mind, but not from the heart. So I'd rather say thank you to everybody, you know who you are, one love. If you were at this horizon looking and saying peace, what kind of song would you listen to? Fuck the police. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> uh, sorry, I, had to, I had to play around. Huh, that's a good question. I think it would be Adam and Eve from Nas. It's the new song that I really, really like right now. That would be playing. Yeah. Or Nas again and Damian Marley. Uh, Sabali. The song is called Patience. Beautiful song. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank you both. All right. Good time. Yeah, man. It was great. Was that cool? It was all right? It was good, man.